I'm Mark Burton. I'm Executive Vice President of Sales and Partners here at MySQL. I had the opportunity to introduce our next keynote, which is One Laptop Per Child from Mike Evans at Red Hat. Uh, just a couple of quick comments here. One, one Laptop Per Child is a very, very interesting, very exciting worldwide initiative, and it really will, really does have meaning, and you'll hear a lot about that in just a few moments. Uh, Red Hat, real quick, we're really proud to have Red Hat here doing a keynote. They're a diamond sponsor here of our event. We appreciate that. They're our, our big brother in bringing open source really to the world. And a go-to-market partner. So we really appreciate that. Just a few comments about Mike Evans. Mike has been with Red Hat as a vice president since 1999. He's really helped them through uh, really the growth phase, brought them into being a public company, and currently spends his time looking for new markets and new technologies to supplement Red Hat's success. So with that, I'd like to have everybody help me welcome Mike Evans. Is that Did somebody unplug it? <laughs> Someone appropriate. I guess we're going to have to power down and power up. Right? Okay. All right. Well, actually, I'll start off because the, uh, the first couple comments don't require any slides while they reboot this. And everybody gets to see it reboot. Um, to know at least I'm running Red Hat Enterprise Linux on my desktop. Um, but it's actually great to be at end customer events. To me, these are way more exciting and interesting than events where you have a bunch of vendors talking to each other, which is a lot of the industry events in high tech, where you have vendors and venture capitalists and lawyers. It, it, to me, the most uh, valuable people to the open source companies like Red Hat and others are the end users. There are single true fans, as there's a lot of other opportunistic uh, market participants that like open source to a point or have groups within their company that love it and other groups that hate it. Um, it's also great to see MySQL, MySQL cranking in the marketplace. I've been working with them for three or four years on various initiatives, great people. Um, and one of the things I want to do today is spend a couple minutes on a smarter way to think about the desktop client marketplace. And then I want to go through a project that in my mind adheres to that concept and in my view is one of the most exciting projects in the entire world of computing. That's the one laptop per child, also known as the hundred dollar laptop. Let me log in. And I'm going to show a five minute video also of some of the main people that are creating the technology, the hardware and the software. Um, and <laughs> there's a lot of interesting dynamics around open source actually in the market, whether you can go from, hang on, what's that? <laughs> All right, here we go. Coming up in open office. Um, whether you, I mean, you can look at everything from the global adoption of open source, which, which to me is always fascinating, as Martin described, the range of countries where MySQL has employees, but the demand and interest for open source is just an incredibly global phenomenon and extreme in many regions. It also is amazing to me to look at the, the entire computing infrastructure and more and more up, up the stack, as people say, where open source solutions okay, are coming together. Um, another area of, of sort of dynamic is just mainstream adoption. Two to three years ago, uh, open source adoption what was what I would affectionately call the freaks of IT. You have Wall Street people, uh, people like Amazon.com. Now we see in the United States what I call people who like to go home at five and watch their kids' soccer game. It's a very different dynamic. So when you combine all of those dynamics plus academic, at extreme academic adoption around the world where people are teaching and utilizing open source in their classes, to increase uh, venture capital investment in open source, and then not not to fail to mention very big players recently is your Oracle jumping into the Linux market, uh, a bit 
disingenuous in their intention, if you ask me, but they're in. Uh, you have Microsoft and Novell with their partnership, which um, I'd rather not digress, so I'm not going to spend time on that. Um, but again, if, 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 it would, if open source wasn't changing the altering the landscape, obviously those people wouldn't care. So one of the most interesting topics that creates lots of high drama and gets lots of press and endless opinions is the Linux desktop. And um, it's you know, sort of a collision of smartphones, cheap laptops, devices, cheap PCs, developing countries. Plus, I think a lot of the world just loves to see Microsoft challenged or you know, to have, to have things to throw rocks at them. The one thing we've always thought at Red Hat was that the strategy to sort of just knock off Windows at five to ten dollars a copy was just uninspiring and, and actually a bad business. Uh, what, what internally I would always call a sucker's back. You could come up with great spreadsheets that show there's a hundred million of these guys and if we just get two percent of them or five percent and we get them to pay ten bucks, look at the math, we make money. It just doesn't work and it's uninspiring. It's, it's looking backwards. There was a recent article last week by Doc Searles uh, on this topic and it had a lot of good points but to me one of the main interesting points was you know, don't make Linux, don't try and take the same model that Windows has done to the market and the OEMs in the world for the last 25 years. Don't try and just make Linux fit that. It's wrong. Linux is a building block. It's, it's, a, it's bigger than that. And don't try and do that. You're, gonna be, you're just going to continue to grind in, uh, in a lot of ugliness in my mind. So, jumping on that respect, one example of what I would call enlightened thinking along those lines is one laptop per child. How many people in the room are, have heard of one laptop per child with a hundred dollar laptop? Okay, good. So about 80 percent, I would guess. Um, as Mark mentioned, I've been at Red Hat for seven years and I've been on the board of one laptop per child for two years. And while my time at Red Hat, I always describe to people as is more fascinating by a factor of 20 than, than anything prior to that that I've done. Uh, the participation in the OLPC activity sort of takes it to a whole other level of fascination. Um, and just briefly, for those who aren't familiar, it's a nonprofit entity founded by Nicholas Negroponte, spun out of the MIT Media Lab. It's got some name brand, interesting and strong founding partners who have all contributed money and resources to help make this project work. And the plan is to build and distribute laptops. A fairly simple plan. Sell them direct to governments at a very targeted market, young children in developing countries. It's a fairly unique set of uh, characteristics, however, and inside Red Hat two years ago, two, about two and a half years ago, I was asked to investigate this concept after Nicholas Negroponte met our head of the China office and had, had, had this idea for this $100 laptop and changing the world for educating young children and empowering them. And I was asked to analyze the feasibility and if we should join and invest two million dollars and people. And we were a public company and two million dollars is a lot of money to Red Hat, a lot more percentage-wise than to an AMD or a Google. So I presented to our senior manager at the time, and this was really an idea and a handful of people, and I said, I started off and just said, it's a nonprofit entity run by a college professor, going to manufacture hardware and sell it direct to governments. Is that enough uniqueness for you? And they kind of look, these are people who are used to hearing presentations about how we analyze and partner things with Intel or IBM or HP or Dell or Cisco or someone. And this was just, I got some really interesting questions and looks from a lot of the people in the room. And people would say like, well, you know, what? Well, can we get this guarantee? Can we get that? And I'd be like, no. You guys, this is a seat at the table and a chance to influence things. And luckily, um, it, it, became, it was too noble, too exciting, and with too big of a chance to change the landscape, so I'd rather have you go in. And um, it's, been, it's come a long way in two years, but something also people have to be reminded of is it is an educational project. There's a lot, there's a horde of opinions, angles, and ideas on this, and it's one of the most volatile and interesting topics in the industry, and lots of naysayers, as, as a guy saw, lots of bozos, Lots of naysayers, lots of also productive commentary though, and criticisms and ideas. Um, laser focus on the target market is an interesting aspect of this product. Again, kids in developing countries who've never seen a computer in their life. It's a, it's a very easy, it simplifies a lot of decisions and 
hardware design, software design, timelines, what things are happening. It really streamlines the process. And in terms of all PCC's focus, it's very simple. Just trying to build a tool that allows kids to learn themselves and encourages experimentation and collaboration. And early tests that we have, there's thousands of laptops, uh, uh, data type units out there already in places in Nigeria, Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, Libya, in the United States, all over the world. And another very interesting aspect of this, obviously, is it's utilizing open source software across any software that ships on the laptop. The OPC organization has made a commitment that it will be and has to be open source software. So Add-on software that people want to use or build, etc. It can be anything. It's a free market, obviously. But anything that ships on the laptop has to be open source. And we believe that that will also enable the percentage of the children that care about that to have access to it, to have transparency, and to learn about technology as they grow up as well. There's a lot of interesting dynamics around this project. Um, at, at, at a high level, it's really captured the world's imagination. It's not just technical people, it's, it's artists, it's technologists, it's governments, officials, it's corporations, it's individuals. A lot of individuals who've made a lot of money in high tech over the last 15 or 20 years are coming forward and wanting to participate because they say, I want to give back. I've made 50 million, 100 million, a billion in some of these cases and said, how can I help? How can I help change the world? It's got Hollywood interest. It's got, you know, Kofi Annan, when he was head of the UN, introduced the project. Uh, you have Bono writing the, an original score for the Buddha music. And it's a pretty fascinating set of dynamics. Um, in terms of the design of the, of the hardware itself, incredibly low cost, high quality design. This is another interesting area. It's, it's estimated that we have over $25 million in investment in the design. Now, a lot of that is not paid. What ends up happening with OBC over the last two years is whenever there's a problem or a challenge in hardware or software, some of the best experts in the world step forward and say, what can I do to help? Let me give you ideas. And we've got just an incredible world-class design on the cheap, again, because this is just an energizing topic that people want to help with. Uh, in terms of the software, this is one of the most radical and sort of controversial aspects of the project. There's a new user interface that's codenamed Sugar, and it's designed for children and sharing. It's open source, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later and show you some screenshots as well. Next level down, there's some amazing screen technology that I'll drill into, and some unbelievable power consumption breakthroughs. And a lot of that has to be done as, is due to incredibly focused on the target market, what this market needs. They need to have low power consumption, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more. All of this also with a very transparent organization. The OPC entity with, with Nicholas Negroponte is extremely transparent. About a year and a half ago, when, when the United Nations Kofi Annan was launching, was going to launch the laptop, there was a bunch of press, the Wall Street Journal, and other people were doing stories. And I was the Red Hat spokesperson for it. And I got a call from a Wall Street Journal reporter who said, you know, he asked me some basic questions about Red Hat's participation, and he said, what, what do you know about uh, Microsoft and Apple, you know, wanting to make software and offering software to all PC for this? And at that time, you know, I said, well, you have to ask them, you know, and he said, come on, you know more than that. And I said, well, what are you talking about? He said, well, I talked to Nicholas this morning, and he said he's had a conversation with both of them, they'd offer software, and he told them no, because his customers, the countries, said they want to open source software, and I was going, kind of like, oh, okay. So, you know, I mean, he was just incredibly open with all his conversations, and that's the way the organization, they have, they have an amazing amount of information on the internet, on, on the, on the laptop.org wiki about the software, about the status of testing, about the hardware, about what they're thinking. It's not a closed door, Macintosh described pirate flag kind of game. This is, this, is, this is really a phenomenal process that they're going through in creating the hardware and the software. Um, obviously, my last point, there's a lot of folks challenged by this. And, and a lot of it is business, economic challenges, strategic challenges, mind share, market share challenges. And as I said, there's endless opinions. Some of them true opinions, others bought and paid opinions. And I expect that to continue to accelerate as we get closer to shipping these laptops a little bit later this year. So in terms of Red Hat's role here, as mentioned, we dove in early and we've got several full-time employees that are working on the base software that's going to ship with the laptop. 
Again, the beauty of making a hardware and software device together, unlike the classic Windows, Linux, PC model where Intel and AMD make their systems and Microsoft or other Linux guys make their systems and you get, I call it two ships passing in the night, you kind of ram them together at the end and try and get everything to work together and then suspend and resume doesn't work, which was the, the issue right here but with my laptop. If somebody shut it and it doesn't, doesn't work properly, I resume on Linux. So the ability to make the device together combine the hardware and software and have the teams work together is the reason why there is power breakthrough, power management breakthroughs, why this, why this is going to be similar to the iPod in my mind. When it comes out and finished, when I first got an iPod, I looked at that thing and just said, man, they nailed it. And I think this has the potential to do the same thing. When you divide, design the device together for a specific market, kids at that are going to grab it and say the, the equivalent of they nailed it in whatever language they speak. Our team is also participating, they're, they're, beyond the laptop, there's obviously a whole ecosystem of networking, of servers, of content. Security is a, is a monstrous and interesting topic. And again, the OPC team is being very open about the challenges, about uh, people's views and opinions. And again, always looking for ideas as opposed to people who are just going to throw mud. It's great. Throw a little mud, point out the problem, come up with an idea to help or get out of the way. There, there's, there's more people that have the equivalent of walking through walls on this project than anything I've seen in my 45 years of living. Um, in terms of the hardware, what's inside this thing, this is sort of a, a list of the main elements. The, 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 C, the CPU was recently upgraded from the prior version just to gain a little bit more power and the flash memory was doubled. There's a lot of work being done, um, just an inordinate amount of work over the last two years to come up with this list. The, the company that's building the computers is called, is named Quanta, who's one of the top two manufacturers of computers and laptops in the world. Prior to getting Quanta on board, Nicholas Negroponte would go around to all these different manufacturers and ask them if they would manufacture it, and the majority of them would laugh them out of the building. And Quanta, the CEO of Quanta, jumped in and said, I'm willing to help this to change the world. Um, there's a wireless mesh. I, I, I'm going to hurry because I, I guess I'm a little bit short on time. And I can't do a lot of these projects take justice in five minutes. So I re request people go to the laptop wiki. Let me jump to the display because this is an amazing one. The display is, is the resolution is unreal. The, the ability you can read this display in direct bright sunlight as well as indoors. It's also low cost and amazingly low power consumption. This has been very amazing to see the progress over two years and is an area where people have walked through walls repeatedly to get to this point. The mechanical design is another marvel, again, heavily driven by the target market. There's safety elements because there's going to be kids with these things. There's a lot of weather resistance and tolerance criteria due to the extreme conditions where these are going to be used. There's a lot of focus on ease of repair and replacement. And then a lot of high quality design so that it is also an attractive and functional device. Power management, as I've talked about, is a really innovative area. The target market's demanded as there's limited and uneven power. Um, and in parallel to this, there's the human power generation concept. And those familiar with the early days of OPC, it had a hand crank on the actual laptop, and it was kind of uh, a big part of the publicity about it. And it was in tests, it was determined that the, it was bad for a child's arm to be cranking like this over and over. It was a bad motion to their elbow. It was also not good for the laptop itself because the case would crack. So again, two or three of the world's experts in power generation jumped in and said, I'm going to help. And there's going to be about seven or eight different options for human power generation for this to come out. And some of them are groundbreaking as well. And again, it's all about looking at the target market. What do they need? The Red Hat software. Fedora base, stripped down to less than 100 megabytes. Um, we're viewing the laptop more like a cell phone or a device in terms of its updated ability and the ability to reset it back to the original state on a very easy basis. We're collaborating with a, a, a lot of designers, a lot of testers, and driving the sugar user interface and, and using open firmware. If you take a step back and, and look at the landscape of the scenario, we have 5, 10, 20, 50 million laptops over the next five years, out into the hands of people. It's really the first time in the last 20 years 
an opportunity for a new platform that's not a Macintosh or a Windows. And that clean slate approach from a lot of the technologist's perspective is a very interesting concept. In terms of the software that's going to come on the machine, we're going to include all these capabilities for kids, journal to store information, web browser, a wiki, a basic word processor, an ebook reader, chat, voice over IP, email, logo programming language, e-toys, video, music, audio, multimedia, search. And there's even a lot. There's games being poured. There's educational projects being ported. There's a very active and growing community of people to build uh, applications for this. There's also going to be school servers, uh, as I mentioned, the requirements are still being vetted, but I assume MySQL will likely be a, very, a valuable part of the school servers, and there'll be a lot of places where it can play. Um, I'm going to quickly go through the, a couple slides on the user interface. You can just see how different this is. So this is one of the main screens of the Sugar user interface. There's great tutorials and all sorts of analysis on the website about this. Um, it's very much about participation and working together. There's not file folders. This is not for people who want to run PowerPoint and spreadsheets. Um, one of the most interesting things was when the first time I saw this user interface, I was in a room with a, about 15 other 40, 40 plus year old men, and the designer was rolling out this user interface and talking to us about a year ago. And she, halfway through, you could see kind of people were getting uncomfortable and looking at their Windows laptops or whatever. And she said, You know, you guys, I know you, don't worry if you're uncomfortable. I know you're all smart people, but the reality is you are so far from the target market, whatever you, your opinion has no impact. So whatever, whatever advice you've got, keep it to yourself. I don't care. You don't, you don't matter. That. So whatever it's kind of like, geez. You know, there were there some high-powered people in the room who were kind of set back, but she was right. It's like something, a lot of the articles you see, it's like, oh, that's different. It's like, yeah. These are people who have never seen a computer who are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. So don't try and put your pre-existing notions onto them. This is a, just a quick example of the journal. This is a, this is a slide I mentioned. There's those that don't want this or a variation on it to succeed. And I saw this false, this is a false ad mock-up. Microsoft didn't really run this ad. Um, but someone did this after one of the times Bill Gates bashed the one laptop or child project, and I thought it was very humorous. But it's, it is, it's a scary concept to a lot of people to think about 50, 100, 200 million kids growing up in the world in the next generation based on open source software and low cost hardware that does a certain set of functionality. That's scary to a lot of people. But as I always say, being on the wrong side of global inclusion and advancement is it, just a bad place to be. You, you, you can't be there. You're going to get overrun by the masses. So let me, I'm going to show a very quick five-minute video. I just want you to see some of the people from some of the MIT professors who quit their full-time jobs after 20, 25 years of being professors to be on this project, people from Red Hat and other engineers. So video, please. Thank you. 
taking out your laptops, you take out a half a dozen of these little green machines and people are like, that's a hundred dollars. I mean, they, they, they pretty much recognize that. My name's still Walter Becker. <laughs> and I work at one laptop at a I guess my official title is President of Software and Content. Um, whatever that means. Can we transplant the culture of open source software development, which is all about collaboration, critique, about and, and the tools of collaboration and critique as well, and get the education industry to adopt them? The design of the laptops is a really interesting project. Because, well, it is geared towards a lot of individuals who haven't had experience working with computers. It's also designed in such a way that trying to do a lot of new things that haven't really been done before. I am Emil Eliasson. I graduated from Carnegie Mellon University with degrees in art and computer science. I began in New York working with the Pentagram design team, where I worked on UI design and some interaction design for the laptops. So I'm trying to persuade my other half that they're like shoes. And I should be allowed as many computers in the house as she has as shoes. Uh, it's a tough sell. I'm David Woodhouse, I work for Red Hat on the LBC project. Um, it was transferred on the project a year and a half, two years ago, I think. And I spent a lot of time working directly with the, the hardware guys, and making sure that everything works, making sure that the physical things work, the screen and the, the keyboard and the, the battery charging and everything like that. I remember one large computer manufacturer early on looked at the design We said, um, this requires 20 or 30 miracles and our role here is one miracle per product and uh, good luck, <laughs> but we think you need to be more realistic. I'm Mary Lee Jepson. I've been working at One Laptop Your Child for two years and a little longer, and I'm in the Chief Technology Officer. They're absolutely right. One miracle of the product. What's different is this isn't a product. It's not a product at all. It's a global humanitarian cause. And we're just able to mobilize people in a different way. One Laptop sort of represents a blank slate. You've got millions of users who don't have any backwards compatibility needs. They don't have any pre-existing notions of how computers are supposed to work, and so you can start new. My name is Owen Williams. Um, I'm a volunteer for the OLPC project. Um, I work on uh, Penguin TV, which is a news feed reader, and I also do some work on the user interface in general. I like to imagine poor children using it, and having a pool to get out of, to have more opportunities that they don't often have. And so it's a great, it's a wonderful thing to, to imagine and I hope that it comes to truth. Hi, my name is Marcelo Dazaji and I work for, I live in Brazil and I work for Red Hat. Um, I have been working in the project for six, seven months and I am developing the driver for the wireless interface and working on the mesh network. You know, normally the concept of giving kids computers is sort of you set up a computer lab with a bunch of Windows machines and sort of leave it at that. Um, you know, there's just so many really interesting problems, things like not having reliable sources of electricity or not having reliable internet infrastructure and you know, at the, at the end of the day, uh, it means that millions and millions of kids are going to get access to um, knowledge and tools that they never could have had before. And by the way, that that video is on YouTube, stored in my sequel. And uh, I encourage you to, if 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 anybody's interested, to, to share that if you think that's an interesting video. So let, let me close out with just uh, some thoughts that I read recently about LPC, and I thought it was an interesting summary. And, and again, the, the opinions on this are all over the map, probably even in this room. Um, you can see also, from those who, who know the Linux and open source developers in Linux, you can see we put a lot some of our 18 players on there, Marcello, Marcello Tassati, Chris Blizzard, David Woodhouse. Those are recognized names, at least in the Linux community. 
Um, but, but by dropping millions of laptops into young minds' hands, that sort of, that right there is an interesting concept. Um, allowing them to experiment, using it, including the technology itself, yet being able to go back quickly to a, to a, to a static state or the original state. And you really need to look at the big picture where you got a generation growing up just believing that this is the right way to work, to work collaboratively and make information a tool. It's not all secretive, um, possibly not in the short run again, because again, this is so disruptive and there's so many people in control positions that don't want this to, something like this to succeed. Nicholas Negroponte also says, he doesn't care if this or a variation on the theme succeeds. He just wants lower cost computers for kids in this market segment or this need area. So if in three years OLPC doesn't exist anymore and there's other companies filling this need, he's happy as a clam. It's not, it's not a mission to try and beat Apple or beat Dell or beat Microsoft. It's all about, the, and that, that kind of focus is what really drives everybody involved with the project. But you really got to think about what this could empower with kids and its actually impact beyond just learnings and technology if people are brought up thinking in this more collaborative manner. So for anybody who wants to get involved, I encourage you, please check out the wikilaptop.org. There's tons of great information. The group doing this is open about everything they're doing, open to, open to comments. It's overrun right now with people who want to help. They're, kind of, they're hiring full-time people just to navigate all the inbound emails and trying to categorize where people can help, but there's some good suggestions on the weekend. I thank you for your time.